So Other people trickle in as we go. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Thanks, Anita. Absolutely. Um, my my name is Anita Kuno, and the name of my talk is uh, Gnome Outreach Program for Women: My Experience. So, uh, starting off, who am I? Um, so my uh, Twitter handle and my IRC nick are the same, and I pronounce it Antea. Um, and uh, that's my email address. Uh, I work with HP, uh, and I work uh, upstream with OpenStack. Does anybody know who opens, what OpenStack is? Yes? Oh, okay, great, some awareness. Lovely. So that's what I do uh, and who I am. I'm uh, a self-taught developer. Uh, I work remotely from home. And everything I've learned, I've learned from home. Uh, so I live uh, two and a half hours drive north of Toronto, Ontario, in Canada. And um, that was my base uh, where, I, where I learned what I learned uh, from home. Uh, uh, the different things that I did in order to learn, I went to user group meetings. Uh, I attended conferences. Um, I volunteered. Uh, to help at conferences. Uh, there's some people when they're getting started, uh, they may not have the resources uh, in order to go and actually pay the fees to attend a conference, uh, but one option is always to volunteer because most conferences needs lo need lots of people to organize and help with signage and registration and so on. So that's always an option uh, if somebody wants to gain some experience and get their foot in the door. Speaking at conferences, um, there's all different sizes of conferences, and so it's always an option um, to uh, get your foot in the door and, and to get out there and to start talking and, and exercise your own voice. And then you find out who you are and other people find out um, what you're all about. Um, as well as taking on online courses. And one of the things that I did was I made audio recordings for uh, uh, an organization called Ruby Learning. And they were based out of India. And um, I, so I took the online course, and I also noticed that they had a need um, to fill. And one of the things that I did was I made audio recording tools um, for this particular uh, group. And one of the things that I got from that was I actually had to speak code. So when one of the things that's helpful for, for learning code is that if you actually have to say it out loud, uh, and you say what something is and uh, the function name and so on, if you're actually speaking it, then you have, you're forced to ask questions, what does this mean? Uh, and so that was something that was helpful for me to do. I also ran an online pair programming group. Um, so the particular organization uh, that I was with, it was a different uh, group. Uh, and uh, pair programming was very important, and we were all working remotely. So through email, I coordinated um, the organization of people working together, and so we worked with Skype, and we did uh, pair programming, and it was also very, very good for meeting different people. So we had about uh, 20 different people, and so the commitment was one hour per week uh, that you would be, make yourself available to pair with the other person, coordinate the schedule, and then actually have a session. And that actually was very popular and worked out very well uh, for creating uh, some glue in the group itself. My, my work prior to the internship uh, um, with the Nomad Reach program for women, uh, I did contract work with Ruby and Rails. I did content production. Uh, I have done work as a writer, and so I, I did content production for that. Uh, I also did some front-end work, C uh, CSS and HTML, uh, as well as some deployment uh, with an old uh, Rails app. Uh, we had to um, put it on a new server and, and, and update it and so on. So I did some of that work uh, while I was also doing other non-technical related work in order to be able to uh, continue to live where I wanted to live uh, and give myself the flexibility to continue learning at home. Uh, I heard about the internship uh, with the Gnome Outreach Program for Women um, on Twitter. And I was very clear from the beginning what my goal was. And my goal uh, for doing the internship was to get a job. 
by the end of the internship, I wanted to be paid to do the work that I was doing. And that was something that, that I was very, very clear in my mind. And every person that I spoke to when I was investigating the internship, I shared that goal with them. And I looked for the people who were willing to hear that uh, and be supportive uh, of that goal. Um, I selected OpenStack. The first thing that appealed to me was the documentation uh, with OpenStack. Uh, when I went to the website, I found that it was very, very clear uh, in, in terms of its presentation. So that was a very, very good first impression. And then the second thing was the people that I met. Um, I really, really enjoyed talking to them. I liked their approach. I liked the way that I was encouraged to ask questions. And they also asked questions of me. Um, I met uh, other people uh, involved with um, outreach, NOM Outreach Program for Women uh, and in the channel on irc.gimp.net. Um, so I spent some time in there, um, again, telling people what my goal was for the internship and then meeting various people in that channel. Whoops. Um, it was in the channel that I met my mentor, the person who, was, who would be my mentor in the program, and her name is Isha Sethe. Um, she uh, is an OpenStack developer. She works on the Glance project as well as Nova. Uh, and uh, she works uh, out of Virginia uh, and she works with Rackspace. And uh, she had identified herself as a mentor and was looking for somebody to work with. And we hit it off very, very well. And I was um, very grateful uh, that she uh, was willing to be my mentor. Making my first commit. Um, part of the GNOME Outreach Program for Women application process is that I don't just talk about how wonderful I am or give a song and dance about what I'm going to do. Um, I have to actually demonstrate my ability to do it. And they require that people make a commit to the code base. And it doesn't have to be a challenging commit. You just have to demonstrate that you're willing to go through the process to learn the steps necessary for that organization uh, in order to make a commit. Uh, so I made my first commit um, with Isha walking me through the whole process. Um, I filled out my application. That, uh, that actually took a pro, uh, probably about three or four days because I would go through a round of filling it out. I would get feedback from my mentor. We would discuss it, and then I would do another round of filling, uh, filling out my application. Um, I also made a second commit um, because there were three positions in um, the program for OpenStack, and uh, there was only one or two of us applying. So uh, I also made a second commit with uh, a different project than the one I ended up working on. Uh, but that was a valuable experience as well because then I got to see what their, proce their process was like. Uh, and it was a bit different than the, than the first process that I had gone through. But I did make that second commit also to give myself options um, so that in the uh, selection process, if I didn't get my first choice, then I would have my second choice as an option. Um, I also uh, decided that I wanted to uh, do an internship with other people. Um, the, so it ended up that uh, about three days before the end of the deadline, there was just me available for three positions. And at that point, it was a year ago and a bit, and OpenStack was not as well known as it is now. Um, and there were, I remember one of the programs, uh, Wikimedia is much more well known, and they had, I think they had something like a dozen applicants for about five positions. So I, I talked to different people about steering them over to us and, and um, kind of went out and recruited various people and, and found uh, two other people, helped them get through the process, and they were able to put forward an application as well. Because one of the things that was important for me was that I had a peer group uh, to work with as an intern. Uh, the GNOME Outreach Program for Women. So I've talked a little bit about myself and a little bit about my background and how I got started. Who knows what that is? Oh, good. Yay. All right. Uh, just to recap then, uh, the, uh, the GNOME Outreach Program for Women offers paid internships. They're not, the, the payment is considered a stipend, and it basically is enough money for gas and groceries so that you don't have to go out and find a, a second job 
uh, something to distract yourself so that you can eat, uh, but you actually have enough money so that you can get by and actually focus on the work that's right in front of you, um, which I think is extremely valuable uh, because then the work that you're doing is an actual reflection of what you're capable of doing if you were doing this full time as a job, rather than feeling that you have to do something and then and and then do something else, but but still have that level of focus as if you were working full time. So I think that's really important uh, that there is some form of compensation so that people are freed up to um, uh, to focus on the work that, that's in front of them. Um, a, a bit of the history, um, and I know that Karen is going to talk about this more. She has a talk tomorrow um, uh, about this. Uh, but uh, basically, uh, the, um, my understanding is that Nome recognized that they needed to have uh, gen more gender parity uh, in um, the representation of who was working on open source projects. And so they took it upon themselves to do something internally about that. And they uh, went with the internships, which actually were beneficial in terms of uh, having more women at conferences and more women contribute to open source. Uh, and then they opened it up to other companies. So the, when I was involved, which was a year ago now, um, was the first time that they actually opened it up to other companies. Is that accurate? Okay. Um, that they, they opened it up to other companies. And when I participated, I believe there was 10 other companies, and I think there was about uh, 18 positions uh, over, the, over those 10 companies. Uh, some companies had one position, and I think uh, Wikimedia ended up with five positions. There were three positions at OpenStack. So every company was different in terms of how many interns that they could support. Um, so going back to my process, so after I submitted my application, um, I had to go through, there was the period of waiting for approval, and then there was going to be a period of time before the actual internship started. Um, during that period of time, I was setting up my development environment. Um, OpenStack uses a, a, a tool called DevStack uh, to set up a development environment, and um, it took me many, many times to configure that. Uh, so I basically spent three weeks just continually setting up dev stacks um, so that I had a, a development environment um, to work with. What that did with that enabled me to really understand what other people who are new to OpenStack, um, what they have to deal with, uh, and also to be able to help them um, when they're dealing with, with various problems. Uh, common errors of, of um, passwords or not working or something like that. Um, so, uh, so then I spent some time just working with the dev stack and understanding it. Um, the, my internship when it started, so I, I did uh, work for about three weeks uh, just setting up my, my dev stack and then the internship started. Um, the internship was 12 weeks long and mine was basically split up. Uh, in, my, in my mind there was, two, there was two definite halves to it. So the first half of the internship I worked with two projects. One is called Glance, and that's an image service uh, um, project. And the other is Nova, um, which uh, is, it's called Compute. And basically, um, it deals with hypervisors to spin up uh, nodes uh, to, to have that, them available for you. And so uh, I was uh, working on uh, identifying bugs in my, um, in, in when I was setting up DevStack myself, as well as going through bugs and selecting individual bugs that I was working on. Um, I, part of the internship, uh, I had to write blog posts. Um, I aimed for a weekly blog post. Uh, and um, the way that I worked, I basically had to take a day in order to compose it and write it. Um, everybody's different about how they approach blog posts and, and in terms of that, my only advice is figure out what works best for you and do that. Uh, and the way that I had to do it was I basically had to select a day and that was my blog posting day. And I would write down a bunch of ideas on a piece of paper and then go for a really long walk. And then by the time I got back, I would have a sense of, of what I wanted to say about those ideas and how I wanted to express them. 
Uh, that actually ended up working well, and, and the biggest thing for my uh, blog was that I was able to um, write consistent blog posts. Um, when I got started, this was the first time that OpenStack had participated in uh, the Gnome Outreach Program for Women, uh, and there was no IRC channel uh, established for OpenStack and, and the Outreach Program for Women, uh, so I created one. Uh, the official Outreach Program for Women channel is on, on the uh, GIMP server, and OpenStack works off of the Freenode server, so all of the OpenStack channels are on Freenode. So I created one on the Freenode server. And if you would like to join, you're more than welcome, and that's uh, OpenStack-OPW. So that channel is still in existence, and the motivation for the channel was a gathering place uh, for people to get together, the other interns to talk, and the mentors, and so on. And that actually ended up working very well because I gathered a, a bigger group of people uh, and convinced other people who weren't direct mentors uh, to come in and to participate in the channel and to be available for questions. And that, um, that actually sparked a number of very good conversations. So I, I did that. I convinced people to, to come into the channel and participate. Um, one of the things that I did uh, was that I got involved in the community by helping out uh, with the, uh, the election process. Um, OpenStack has elections uh, every uh, release or just before the, uh, the summit uh, for a new release. And um, I wanted to get involved with that. I'd been monitoring the meeting channel uh, and I saw that this discussion was coming up about having to do that. And um, so I listened to the meetings for, uh, for the technical committee. There's a meeting channel, OpenStack-Meeting. You're more than welcome. Uh, and I saw that the, the uh, elections were being discussed. Uh, I recognized that I had something to offer this process. And so I, I just jumped in. I decided to help with the election. And the person who had to run that election at that time, uh, his uh, nickname is Mordred and his name is Monty. And I decided to introduce myself. And oh my goodness, I haven't even gotten through half of it. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Okay, um, I'll, I'll, I'll try to speed up here. Uh, so I introduced myself to Monty and I told him that I wanted to uh, help participate in the elections. Uh, I didn't really do a whole lot, but just uh, reaching out to him, finding him, telling him that I wanted to participate, that was enough in order to start a conversation uh, and that led to further conversations with this person. Um, so the second half of the internship basically was marked with code freeze. Um, we have uh, two releases in a year, so a six month release cycle. And so we have three milestones and then we have a code freeze. Uh, and then we have uh, about um, four to six weeks uh, when the code is frozen and then we fix bugs ready for the release. So during code freeze, all of the people who had uh, been available to mentor basically disappeared because they needed to get their patches in. And so when I had a problem with my own work, I had nobody available to talk to me because they were all working to, to get their things done. And so that, uh, I had the loss of conversation with, with mentors and the whole mentor group. They were still available, but they just didn't have any time to talk to me. Um, and Anne Gentle, who, was, who is the organizer for the OpenStack uh, Gnome Outreach Program for Women component, she had introduced me to the OpenStack Infra channel earlier, which is the infrastructure team, and they run all of the servers that run all of the testing, uh, and they also run all of the testing tools for all of OpenStack. That's a different talk. But in any case, uh, she introduced me to that channel, and I, I had been lurking in that channel, and I noticed that they needed help, so they were there. Uh, so I just offered to help them. Um, and I negotiated a section of time with my mentor. So I was allowed to stay for two weeks in infra. Uh, and basically, now that I look at it, they spent more time helping me than I actually was effective. You know, I was just kind of a body kind of bouncing around. But they tolerated me, uh, and they put up with me. Uh, and they never had had anybody in that kind of position before, so uh, me introducing it to them was kind of a new idea for them. Uh, but they went with it, and I had a great two weeks. Um, and then I, I said, thanks, I'm done, I have to go back to the work that I was doing before because code freeze was off now. Uh, and they said that they wanted me to stay. 
uh, which was nice to hear. So if I was working at doing an internship, um, being told that, that um, people wanted me to hang around uh, was good news. Um, because I wanted a job, that was, that was my focus. Um, during the second part, I, I focused on uh, resumes and interviews. So I got my resume updated. I got feedback on my resume. Uh, I made some contacts and got some interviews. Uh, went through the process, and I, I did end up getting a job offer. Uh, and I, it was, it was, it was a, a process to make the decision uh, to accept the offer. But I did accept the offer, uh, and I, and and then that was the end of the internship. But it was still a continuation of the process because for me, the internship was a jumping-off point. Uh, to other things. So the Portland Summit was after the internship official, but it was still part of our process. Um, the foundation, the OpenStack Foundation, paid for flights and accommodation for myself uh, and, and the other two interns. So three interns, um, they made sure that we all got to the summit, which was um, very generous on the part of the foundation. Uh, and, and the people helped us to, who helped us to get there. Uh, so that was wonderful to uh, be at the summit. Um, I got to meet Isha for the first time. I did an interview for The Cube. I don't know if you know The Cube at all. Um, uh, they have a website, and they also do um, a uh, broadcasted uh, video uh, television show on the internet, uh, and they have a YouTube, cha YouTube channel. Uh, and so I did an interview for The Cube. Uh, about the Gnome Outreach Program for Women. Um, and it was fun to be able to meet the people and participate in the design sessions. And I found that the, desi the design conversations had the same kind of dynamic as conversations in IRC. Um, and uh, my blog is at antea.info. I'm going to stop here um, because I have some other things as well, but that it's mostly just about me personally. But that kind of ties up. Um, what my experience was uh, with, the, with the GNOME Outreach Program for Women Internship. Um, are there any questions? Does any, go ahead. Um, back at the beginning of the process, and setting up your development environment, how could you um, expand upon how that was for you? And particularly, like, do you find at that point you kind of wanted to pack it in? Okay, just for the, just for the video. Uh, the question was, can I expand on my experience with the development environment, and how did I feel about that? Uh, did I go through a period of time where I wanted to pack it in? And my personal experience uh, was I had gone through so many experiences before uh, because I had been working remotely and um, moving from Windows to Linux on my own at home via email and, and, and long periods of time working on something and then finally getting an answer. Uh, there was, it was very frustrating, but I had gone through this period of frustration before, so there was no, there was no idea that floated through my mind to say, I, I want to give up. So me personally, no. Uh, if somebody had had experiences of working with other people before and then all of a sudden had this thrown at them, it's a possibility uh, that they might have. But, but personally, I did not. Um, perhaps then, to follow up on that, how do you think, um, obviously, if you're talking in terms of open stack, but how do you think communities could improve this like, kind of bootstrapping process? I guess let me give you some context. My feeling from my time as a mentor a lot of potential candidates got very disheartened at getting to the point where they could actually build the product and hack code. So they were perfectly fine programmers, but in terms of getting all the little bits in place to start being able to write code, found that quite difficult. So how do you feel it could be improved if you have any opinions? Okay. The um, question uh, was, the, the context is that, that uh, uh, the experience is that uh, a lot of potential candidates have the intelligence, uh, they've got the ability, but the actual process of, of having to set up a development environment can sometimes be so difficult and so frustrating uh, that that is, is a, a turning point for some people uh, and they're, they're not able to, to move forward with the process. And do I have any suggestions um, for, for how various communities can, can approach this? And I, 
I don't have anything quick off the top of my head to say. The, the one thing I will say is that my personal experience is that I've had many, many, many frustrating experiences in my life. Five minutes, thank you. Um, tree planting is one. Uh, where you know you just you really for for weeks you've got you make no progress. There was like five days where I planted 125 trees per day. I was owing the company to for the privilege of planting trees all day, and it was just so disheartening and so frustrating. But I I knew. I was young, but I, I was not going to quit. And, and within three weeks, I was making decent money. And by the end, I was making really, really good money. And I, I didn't learn the process until I put the time in. And I don't know if it's a matter of selecting candidates who have had Personally, one of the, the one of the uh, if I'm interviewing somebody to do we want to work together, one of the questions I ask people is tell me something about tell me an experience in which you failed and, and what did you do about it. I'm not digging for personal information. I'm digging for tell me about how you fail, because if somebody thinks they can they can succeed in any field and actually achieve their goals and not experience failure, then they're kidding themselves. Because the only way to continue is to experience failure and then stand back up and learn your lessons and do it again and then fall down and then learn your lessons and stand back up. And I don't know, maybe, maybe actually look for that as a personality or characteristic. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, and yeah, so I guess that's all I've got on that one because I don't really have any specific thing to say, you know, offer them this or offer them that. Because at, at a certain point, you have to find the people that are going to be so determined that anybody who puts up a wall in front of them, they're going to either climb it, knock it down, tunnel underneath it, walk around it, or outweigh the wall until it falls down. That's, sorry, that's all I got. Okay. Did anybody have anything else? Does anybody else have anything else? Okay. I was, was going to try to be over by two, right? What do we... We've got about two minutes by my watch. Two minutes? Yeah, I guess then my, so far, I guess the final part to this is my fear as um, a mentor specifically for women is that in our world that we live in, women are frequently told that they can't do it, that they're not good enough, that you're stupid, and rada, rada, rada. Yep. Um, and, I, and I've heard all those as well. Sure. And my fear with that initial kind of onboarding for our communities is the bar has gotten so high. Yes, it has. And even compared to when I started, like the bar has gotten so high yes. to get these things running. Um, that, that mind of you're stupid um, kind of reminds me, well, maybe I can't do it then. And 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 it's and it's interesting because it took me three weeks, and then uh, Liz and I and and Ryan Lane we did a, a presentation. Uh, and we had three hours and 50 people. Uh, and and to, to set up a dev stack environment, that was our goal. We thought, okay, it's going to take us all three hours and, and because it's just so tough. We had it down that we were done in, what, half an hour? We created an image and we had our instructions all out. We had every single person in the room with a working dev stack in half an hour. And we were so surprised, we didn't know what to do next. Um, because and and the, the feedback was we didn't do anything we didn't do anything we didn't do anything but by our minds it's just like we took three weeks of work and we packed it into half an hour for every single person in the room we had a hundred percent success rate for that so by our standards we had a huge success but the participants thought well we didn't do anything you know we didn't spin anything up we didn't do anything fancy so 
I, I understand where you're coming from. And yes, packaging is definitely a direction to go. We are getting better at packaging in our own project, and I think projects mature and get better at packaging. But I think the larger problem here, and the, lar the thing that I considered larger, is what do you do with failure? Because one of the things that I see in my job and what I look for is I'm allowed to fail. And I pick people to work with where it's okay if I fail and it's okay if they fail. I can try something and fail and I still have my place in the group. And I think that it's important to find places, because there are places where that's allowed, to find that and have that and simply by having that and fostering that and recognizing that that's what it is to be in a position where you have permission to fail and get up and try again and you're not excluded for that. And I think, that, I think that's larger than a software construct. I think that's, that's a societal or a group expectation. And, and I think that's something to work towards larger. I think there are pockets of it. And I think that recognizing that and working with those places where there's pockets can, can expand that. Thank you, Lana. I appreciate it. Thank you.